it just doesn't feel like enough for like what was it eighteen dollars for this dish it's like one of those like microwave meals Welcome to Disney's Contemporary Resort. Today we are here to dine at Steakhouse 71 for breakfast. Let's head inside. One of my favorite features of Steakhouse 71 is this hallway as you're getting to the restaurant itself. Now it's lined on the walls with all of these photos of Walt Disney and Roy Disney, his brother, who were here planning Walt Disney World before it opened. Obviously, Walt was not able to see Walt Disney World open itself. That's why it's called Walt Disney World in memory of him. But there's some amazing, cool, construction photos and other things like that lining this hallway and it's definitely worth checking out. I like this picture up here because there's still dirt and everything like it's so in progress still. It's so interesting to see. One of my absolute favorite pictures in this like front hallway area is this one right here. This is the contemporary obviously because that's where we're at but it has the old Skyway that they used to have at uh, Magic Kingdom that I know a lot of younger viewers probably don't know even existed. This is literally the foundation of Space Mountain right here. Exactly. This is where Space Mountain goes. <laughs> because Space Mountain is not blocking, yeah. you know, if you're looking with the vantage point. I don't know. Interesting. We have made it to our seats here at Steakhouse 71 and we're going to go over some of this menu first. Let's show you exactly what they have for breakfast. Looking at the breakfast menu here, we're going to kind of just go over entrees because I feel like that's what everybody's looking for. We have an American breakfast with two eggs, potatoes, bacon, chicken sausage, oh, or chicken sausage. We have a veggie omelet, ham and cheddar omelet, eggs benedict, Walt's prime rib hash. That one's probably the most interesting one. A western omelet, Floridian eggs benedict, steakhouse 71, seasonal pancakes, steak and eggs, and avocado toast for all the entrees. One of the menu items I'm most excited for is the five-legged llama, which is a non-alcoholic specialty. It's cold brew, maple, vanilla, and tonic water. And they didn't have it last time I was here. And I really wanted it because it's like a contemporary like specialty because the whole five-legged llama thing. Except it's not a llama, it's a goat. It's in the mosaic upstairs, which we'll go and show you later. But like, I think that's so fun. I need more specialty, kitschy little drinks like that. That's what I want in my life. One fun thing that I would like to note is that when our table is ready, we got a text. Now, they have not changed their number that they text from since this was a previous restaurant. I have texts from The Wave on my phone here. Are you aware of what The Wave was? Well, The Wave was the restaurant that was here before Steakhouse 71, and it was just outdated. It was a little outdated, but we did, we did like The Wave a lot. It's just this room itself has been really, really plussed up since they've made the changeover. And it's funny, I just have four texts previously. Apparently, we went to The Wave multiple times. <laughs> But this is the first one I've gotten from Steakhouse. Of course we did. Of course we did. You're right. Our waitress said that this is her number one most turned away drink. And that if I didn't like it, she'd make me a regular cold brew. I'm the type of person that even if I don't like it, I'm going to finish the whole thing because I feel bad. She says if I like bitter, I'll, I'll like it. I don't like bitter. I'm just, I don't know why I'm so scared. It's not that bad. I don't know. People are being babies. What's that on top? I don't know. It looks like a little chocolate or vanilla or I don't know. At any Disney breakfast, I have to order Pog Juice. You know what Pog Juice is? It's passion fruit gu guava pi or pineapple guava. One of those. And it's a Disney signature drink here at all of their breakfast dining locations. Um, they also have it on Disney Cruise Line, but not always. So our food has arrived. I have the Steakhouse 71 seasonal pancakes, which are seasonally inspired pancakes with the choice of bacon, pork sausage, or chicken sausage. Um, I The seasonal pancakes right now are cinnamon roll pancakes, which look amazing. And then I got bacon with mine. I ordered the Walt's prime rib hash, which is seared prime rib, fried potatoes, caramelized onions, and peppers topped with a fried egg. Now this is looking a little different than what I expected. I expected the steak to be like more of a solid piece, but it's definitely something I'm willing to try and to wash it down. Nobody knows that reference, that's okay. I have pog juice, obviously. I talked about that before. I gotta get some syrup. Ready? Syrupy goodness. Now, I don't know if this is going to be better than Denny's, but I pretty good. That's pretty good. I have no idea. I just picked up a spoon. I have no idea how to break into this. Um, 
Look at this egg. Come zoom in on this egg. I don't, I don't, I don't like fried eggs like this. I don't know why I didn't think about it. I've never been to Steakhouse 71 for breakfast before, but Isabel has. And what did you say to me when I was looking at this one? I said it was really good, and I really like this dish, so I, I said he should get it. But I've offered to switch with him if he doesn't like it, so... I said no, because I'm going to eat this whole thing and then probably have a hers and say, oh, we switched. That's what I do all the time. It just doesn't feel like enough for, like, what was it, $18 for this dish? It's like one of those, like, microwave meals that you put in there. Steak in there. There's steak in there. There's steak in my microwave meals that I have at home in the freezer. It's so good. A plus. One thing that I've learned, especially from Disney World's 50th anniversary, is that Walt had very bad taste in food. Um, they've had multiple different dishes, especially for the 50th, that was like Walt's dinner, Walt's chili dog. It's like a chili dog with like a, you know, a pack of cigarettes that they sell to everybody. I, I don't know if this is like a... a specifically what he had or what was popular at the time or what but I'm not I'm not hating I'm just I'm allowed to say if I'm not a fan of something also comment section I'm allowed to say if I'm not a fan of something okay people some people were upset about our um, Mickey's not so scary review but we actually had a really bad time do you want us to say that we didn't I don't know what's the problem people okay we're gonna go back to this review we have officially made the switch Isabel seems to be happy about it I am thrilled. Also, she gave me her bacon, so uh, I will have some protein with my breakfast today. I am thrilled. So much better. This is what to go with. Don't listen to Isabel. I think this is amazing. Not only do we try and make sure people know exactly what this meal might cost them on vacation, but also we try to make sure that they know what the best time to make a reservation would be for a dining like this. Now, breakfast at Topolino's the other day, we were there at 7.45. That was when our reservation was. That was very early, but we had so much time with characters. And, I mean, it's great if you're doing a park day if that's what you're doing first. Um, our reservation today was at 10.40. I think breakfast ends at 11, and then they do their switch over like 11, 30, 12. Yeah, the tables are empty, so I don't know. There's some lull in between breakfast and lunch. I will say one thing about this restaurant is it's extremely loud. There's a couple of restaurants on Disney properties that are so loud, and if you get like overstimulated or you have children who get overstimulated I maybe wouldn't recommend that restaurant um, and I, that's not necessarily something we've talked about before but like this restaurant and like Ale and Compass is another one I wouldn't necessarily recommend um, that get really really loud I would say this is pretty standard for breakfast it's not too bad 15 and 18 um, and then it has our AP discount on there 10% for AP um, so yeah 40 bucks oh and then my drink Pretty standard for breakfast, I, I, I would say. All in all, I really think this is a great restaurant. It's a great choice, mainly for locals because it's a pretty easy reservation to get. They have a great burger during lunch. They have great steaks at night. Obviously, breakfast is pretty good too. I don't know if it's a really good one to do on vacation, especially on your first Disney trip. There's two other restaurants here at the Contemporary that I would prefer over this. They're a lot more expensive, Chef Mickey's and California Grill. But those are like the like iconic ones, especially at this resort itself. And this is on the first floor and it has zero windows in there and it's very basement-esque. And that's not bad. Like they really, really plus it up from the conversion from the wave to this one, but I don't know. I, I hope Isabel probably feels the same. I miss the wave butter. They would put sea salt on butter and give it to you with these rolls, and it was so good. Contempo Cafe is the quick service location here at Disney's Contemporary Resort. It is located here in the big atrium area, and they have debuted a new set of cookies and a new chocolate chip. I know that sounds really dumb that these Disney creators come all the way over here to try some chocolate chips that are shaped like Mickey Mouse, but let me tell you, this is groundbreaking. And they're actually really good. I already, teaser, I already had one of these, and I'm probably gonna have the same one. There's a few new cookies. Isabel will talk about them. I think this one is the churro, churro sugar cookie. Um, this one is the kitchen sink cookie. Um, that one is the seasonal sugar cookie. And then this one is a peanut butter chocolate chunk cookie. 
One thing that I'd like to mention that I saw some people online talking about recently is that Disney has this new skip the straw and lid initiative, basically where they do not offer a straw or lid to people if unless they ask for it at their resorts and stuff. I'd like to also remind you that Bob Iger, the CEO of Walt Disney, has a private jet that he flies to all of his meetings and other things like that, but guests are not allowed to have lids or straws now, not even paper straws, unless they ask. So, I'd like to make that note. Um, I think this is the kitchen sink cookie, but it also might be the peanut butter chocolate chunk cookie. I don't know which one it is, but it has Mickey-shaped chocolate chips, and that's all that really matters, to be honest with you. That's all I really care about. Like a typical vlogger, I'm going to pretend like I'm eating this cookie for the very first time and give you my honest review. This cookie is probably one of my favorite things at Disney right now. I don't know if this is like forever or this is temporary or contemporary. Absolutely great if you like peanut butter, if you like caramel, if you like chocolate, amazing. Yum, yum, yum. Isabel shows she's not feeling really hungry right now which I'm thrilled about because I will eat more than half of this cookie. I don't think it's that special. Quick stop before we leave the Contemporary. We're going to check out their gift shop to see if they have any Halloween merch they don't have elsewhere. I know we've, saw, we've seen Halloween merch over at Springs and at Magic Kingdom, but hopefully they have some newer stuff here. We're going to play a little game of Guess That Price. For our Guess the Price item number one, it's this dress. I would say um, 85 Am I close? You're close. Ooh, I was pretty good on that one. Are we going by prices right rules? So um, I can't go over? I guess, yes. Haunted Mansion backpack. Uh, I can't get closer because I might accidentally see the price tag. I'm going 88. Haunted Mansion price is 85, so I went over again. The figment was priced at 88. The new figment bag was priced at 88, so I thought it was going to be the same. What new figment bag? The new Figment Lounge Fly that just came out at Epcot yesterday. And did you get it? I got it. Bag you got, secured. You got like 10 of them, right? No, I did Are not. Are you one of those resellers? No. <laughs> no. Right here we're looking at a contemporary resort branded robe. This is like linen. You want to feel this real quick? It's weird. Very weird texture for a robe. I'm going to try. I'm going to guess $100. Did you see it? No, I didn't. I did not see it. I actually did not see it, I well, promise. Well, technically went over. I technically went over, you're right. I did go over. It's $99.99. Come on, I'm off by a cent, please, please. Okay, Oogie Boogie Mug right here, not looking in case the price is somewhere visible. I'm gonna guess $29.99. $24.99. Okay, we have one more item, and I was looking for it, but they don't have it, and that's a Roosevelt shirt. Disney, why aren't you selling Roosevelts in your parks? I want I want to buy Roosevelts in your parks. Look at that. Roosevelts. Check out the swag. Look at the drip. The vans. The I'm trying to do the Mark Wahlberg thing that he does on his socials. Something we mentioned earlier in the vlog was this massive mural that has the five-legged goat. Now I'm gonna tell you, unfortunately we cannot see him today because you have to go by the monorail to see him, but I'm gonna post a picture right here. This mural is one of the last pieces from Mary Blair. If you know who Mary Blair is, she's an amazing artist that did a lot of stuff here at Disney World and Disneyland. It's a small world. All, like, a lot of modern art is based off of her stuff. It is a Southwest-themed mosaic mural. I don't know why. I know originally it was trying to have a Southwest flair to contemporary, even though contemporary and Southwest don't really match two-handed hand, if you ask me, or at least it's just weird. It's a weird pairing, but... That's why it's here. And I don't think they're ever gonna get rid of it because it's a Mary Blair, so yeah. That was it for us here at Disney's Contemporary Resort. Thank you very, very much for joining us. Thank you for supporting the channel. If you haven't yet, don't just like do the like and subscribe thing. If you could actually share the channel with another friend who likes Disney, who watches Disney vlogs, that's honestly the best way you could help the channel. Leave a comment down below, all that, all that other type of stuff. And I really, really appreciate you guys being here. This has been amazing so far. We'll see you guys real soon. Bye.